Well, when was the last time that you celebrated a big family reunion? You have fond memories of gathering together with family and friends, extended family. Maybe you had a really big family or maybe not as big. I have a lot of memories from family reunions growing up. On my mom's side in particular, because it was such a large family, my mom was one of five and her mom was one of 14. So you can imagine we had about 200 people at our extended family reunion. And when you're one of the little kids, everybody knows you and you know maybe 10 people out of the 200. But there's always fun conversation, catching up with family and friends you maybe haven't seen in a long while, sharing with them in the joys of their life developments, new children, a new job, opportunities, things like that. There's always activities and fun, a lot of laughter. But there's one more thing that's really important at family reunions, good food. Can you imagine, think back to those memories of your family gathering together and there's no food. Something crucial would be missing. A crucial joy, a crucial manifestation of the joy of the gathered group wouldn't be there. Food is one of the best things at those gatherings. It's what human beings do when they get together in joy. They naturally eat food together. In my family, there would be a lot of people in the kitchen for a good portion of the day cooking up a storm so that later we could set the table or tables and sit and enjoy the feast together. Well, today, this is even more precious time, this time with family and extended family, because in our mobile society, it's much more difficult to get large groups of our family together. Many miles now separate us. It takes a lot more planning and more money. Maybe you have to get in an airplane and fly to be able to get together with your family and friends. And so that time together is even more precious. Well, I'm delighted to see so many of you here today, that you drove here, maybe have family coming in from out of town, and you're joining together not just with your families, but here with the body of Christ. Today we're concluding our sermon series, Promised Treasures, which we've been doing all through the season of Lent. And we've been using this series to have visual and sensory objects that remind us of the reality of God's love that reaches out for us, not just through our ears and hearing the Word of God, but also through our other senses like smell, sight, taste, and touch. We have touched ashes, salt, water, light, and wood. We have tasted bread. Today, you will taste milk and honey. Not literally, I'm sorry, I didn't bring enough milk and honey for everybody. But you get a taste of the promised kingdom, the inheritance given to those redeemed and bought with the precious blood of Christ. This is the joy of our celebration and victory with Christ today. When Israel longed for the food of the promised land in the Old Testament, it was called the land flowing with milk and honey. Well, dear friends in Christ, today is our feast of feasts. We celebrate Jesus conquering of sin, death, hell, and the grave. And by His grace and His glorious resurrection, it is our victory too. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! In the early church, Easter would have been the very first time many of newly baptized and instructed Christians would eat and drink at the Lord's table, the body and blood of Jesus. And it was custom before their first reception of the Lord's Supper that they would be given a cup of water that had honey and milk mixed into it. This physical symbol pointed them towards the reality that whenever you partake of the Lord's Supper, you are partaking of the eternal feast of our Lord's heavenly kingdom. Sometimes we call it a foretaste of the feast to come. 
Therefore, the fact that you are here today is a big deal. Just like with your family reunion, if you didn't go, you wouldn't get any of that great food. You'd just be stuck looking at pictures of it afterwards and wishing that you had been there. Well, today you have come and gathered so that you can receive what our God so graciously and lovingly wants to give to you, the fruits of His cross, the milk and honey of His heavenly kingdom, our Lord's body and blood. And it's really all not, not all that much different than a family reunion. When someone is welcomed back into the, the family of God, the house of God, the Scriptures describe it much like a family reunion. The prodigal son has returned. A party is thrown, food is had, and it's a joyous time for all. For that who is lost has been found, and that which was dead, now because of Easter, is alive. Isaiah describes this feast in chapter 25 of his book. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine. The feast that Isaiah is describing is this never-ending feast, the marriage supper of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. A feast that we look forward to. A feast that in the future we will participate in fully, but for now, our Lord is bringing heaven to us. He's bringing a table with a foretaste of this glorious feast to come to sustain us in the reality of His victorious resurrection from the dead. Heaven still awaits us, but it is never so far away that the people of God cannot taste it. When someone confesses faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has brought them over from death into life. You are never closer to your loved ones who have departed in the faith and are now in heaven than when you gather at the Lord's table for His supper. Why? Because in the mundane looking altar and the wafers and the wine, in fact, God is bringing heaven down to earth. That's why when we join in song, before we come to the table, it's not just us singing, but all the host of heaven. Because when you entered into the threshold of this church this morning, as a baptized child of God, you crossed over from death into life, sharing in our Lord's victory over sin. That's what we celebrate today. But until that time when we come fully into His kingdom, which has no end, we gather for this foretaste of the feast to come. We gather to hear the words of our heavenly King, which brings us the joyous news that death is defeated, that your sin is held against you no more, and that God has claimed you as His own. Easter is the day of victory. The enemy is defeated. But we all know that He's still trying to drag us down with Him. You see, until Christ returns, and along with Him the new heavens and the new earth that is promised to those who have faith in Him, we must live with the frailties of age and illness and death. Not an eternal death any longer, for our Lord Jesus has broken that, but an earthly one. We have to deal with broken and strained relationships, the grief that comes with losing a loved one, and the worries that plague us every day, worries about the future for our family, for our home. Am I going to have a job? Are my kids going to grow up knowing Jesus? Are they going to grow up safe and healthy? What's going to happen? But as a result of all those many troubles in our lives, we spend a lot of our time looking for a place to rest. Because most of those things truly are outside of our control. We can't determine what's going to happen or how people will respond to what we do. Dear friends in Christ, here is your rest. Here at Ascension, I invite you each week when you come into the Lord's house to take a deep breath 
and to set the worries and anxieties of your life aside because you haven't come here to do and to perform, but to receive that which has been done for you. Because here on this Easter Sunday, perhaps more than any Sunday of the church here, it is apparent that the work that we are celebrating is not our own, but that of our Lord Jesus Christ, done for you. His word brings you the news of His victory and His promise that it is your victory as well. His sacraments assure you that in the waters of your baptism, you are united in His death to sin, and today joyously united in His resurrection to new life. And He prepares a table for you to give you the fruits of His cross, the salvation won for you through the atoning sacrifice of His blood. This atonement and victory is yours, but you can rest because it isn't something you've done or something that you've earned. It's all His work for you. This really struck me last night. We did an Easter vigil service here, and as part of that service, because Easter is the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation, there are long readings from the Old Testament talking about how God has delivered His people and made these promises which are now fulfilled today. And one of those readings is the story of the account of the people of God on the Red Sea. And they get to the Red Sea and behind them the army of Pharaoh, the mightiest army on the earth seeking to kill them, shows up and they feel trapped and afraid. Just like our worries And the things that are beyond our control in this life can make us feel trapped and afraid. And I was so struck by the words that Moses spoke to the people. Here's what he said. Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. So, dear friends in Christ, today as we celebrate Easter, fear not. Stand firm. Take a deep breath. Set the worries and anxieties of life aside, because the enemies that surround you, they will be no more. Sin, death, and the grave are defeated. Your Lord fights for you, and He has won the victory for you. He has done it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Come to the table of the Lord, for He is bringing you a better feast than all others, a feast of victory, a foretaste of the feast to come, a foretaste of the promised land that awaits all who have faith in Jesus. In His name, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, won this day in His victory over sin, death, and the grave, until He returns to bring us to that promised land flowing with milk and honey. Amen.